Welcome to Boots on the Ground, a podcast brought to you by Dogs on Deployment. I'm your host, Kylie One, the Marketing and Communications Director for Dogs on Deployment, and I am absolutely thrilled to kick off this exciting journey with all of you. Boots on the Ground is a special podcast dedicated to shining a spotlight on the incredible volunteers, boarders, and business collaborators who make our mission possible. In each episode, we'll hear heartfelt stories, gain valuable insights, and celebrate the remarkable efforts of those who support our military members and their beloved pets. Today, we have a special guest who has played a significant role in our community. Mandy Pratt, a dedicated Dogs on Deployment board member, has not only contributed her time and expertise to our mission, but has also made a lasting impact through her work as an artist and the owner of Grey Boy Pet Prints. Her passion for honoring the memory of beloved pets through her art has touched many lives, and we are thrilled to hear her story. So without further ado, let's dive into our conversation with Mandy. Welcome to Boots on the Ground. Hi, Mandy. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And hello to everybody who's listening. Absolutely. We're so excited to talk to you today. For those of you guys who don't know, Mandy is one of our Dogs on Deployment board members. But what we are going to talk with her about today is actually not her board membership. We're going to start talking about her pet print business called Gray Boy Pet Prints. Would you mind telling us a little bit, Mandy, about how you got started as an artist with and what inspired that focus on pets specifically? Sure. So um, even back a long time ago, when I was a teenager, I knew I wanted to be an artist and I went to college for that and actually became a graphic designer. And then that led to photography. So I started only offering photography. And then because I'm such a pet lover, um, I knew that I had to only focus in, no pun intended, on pets. So that's what I ended up doing. (laughs) That's awesome. Can you share with us the story Um, So you've always wanted to be an artist and you went to school for it, but what led you from photography to founding your business, Gray Boy Pet Prints? Right. So um, basically I had a kitty uh, way back then whose name was Jake and his nickname was Gray Boy. So um, (laughs) he he was super important to me. Yes. He was a, a Russian blue rescue from a shelter. Um, as a kitten. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, he grew up with us and he helped me through some really hard times. So when he passed, you know, I wanted to be able to remember him always. And just like a lot of, you know, of us pet parents, they don't live as long as we do. So we want a way to um, be able to remember them forever. And with my business, I offer pet photography at people's homes as well as the pet portrait etchings. And so um, with offering those two services, I feel like I can reach people now with the pet portrait etchings. I can help anybody right worldwide. So I love being able to help on a larger scale. Absolutely. That's beautiful that you're able to offer that. I know, which we'll talk a little bit further about that you've been able to extend that worldwide service of pet etchings to some of our American Hero Pet of the Year, but we'll talk about that a little bit further in detail later. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about how your business came to collaborate with us at Dogs on Deployment? Yeah, well, okay, that was a really long time ago. I'm (laughs) gauging this on how old my son was. He was, he's now 23, and he was like, 11 or 12 I think so over a decade I think so and yeah and so I remember somehow I had found out so I'm a military brat my dad was in the Marine Corps for 20 plus years and you know I grew up a military brat we moved all over the place so somehow I heard about dogs on deployment and saw that they were needing a photographer So um, I wasn't able to help that year, but one of my dear friends helped out, and that's how I became connected with Dogs on Deployment. Awesome. So just to explain a little bit further, when it comes to the photography business that we were, photography services, I I mean to say, um, that we were looking for was for our American Hero Pet of the Year contest, where we open up nationwide for military pet parents to submit their dogs, and we have a contest to become Dogs on Deployment's mascot, and that changes yearly. So the photos that Mandy is discussing is 
we capture that service member with their military pet that has been selected as military pet of the year. Which one did you start with, Mandy? So here's the funny thing. That was actually for the founder of Dogs on Deployment, um, Elisa and her dog, JD, I remember, um, and her other doggy. And I remember um, Taryn was able, my friend, my other photographer was able to photograph them together. So most of the years I actually was just helping with the pet portrait etchings until Nala came along. And then with Nala, I was able to photograph in Oceanside. So that was super cool. Awesome. So you started with that photography of our founder and president, Elisa, and her um, original chief dog officer and original mascot, first deployed dog of dogs on deployment, JD, unfortunately, who has since passed, but we have honored, continue to honor him every single day in our mission right. and help right. other people in need. So yes. with the photography and the etchings, can you describe some of the other ways that your business has supported dogs on deployment over the past decade? Sure. Um, and I did actually get to finally photograph JD with JD's family um, before he passed. So um, they have some super special photos from that. So um, it was nice to finally meet him in person um, and be able to photograph him. Um, so yeah, over the years, in between those things, um, each year I've donated the pet portrait etchings, um, which I craft from somebody's own photo. So they'll send me like a cell phone shot. And then I would take that and create an etching with that. So that's a whole process using um, sunshine and metal and ink and my grandmother's printing press. So I have a little studio in my garage where I do all, all of that. And so each year um, with the mascot competition, um, you know, there's always the top three, right? And so, yeah, there's the the finalists. And so um, ever since, gosh, I don't know, over five years ago, um, maybe seven, I've been um, helping out with that. So um, Dogs on Deployment will send me the finalists. They'll send me um, their story and a couple of their photos. And that is my favorite part is getting to read their stories. And like, I feel like I get to know them when I'm reading the story and then I'm working on their images. Uh, it's just super special. And then the fun part, of course, is getting to deliver it. And sometimes I'll hear back, you know, from the from the um, doggy's parents and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I got it. Thank you so much. And it's just really fun. And then sometimes they'll even show me like where it's sitting or how they framed it. So it's fun. You I'm continued to be blown away. You've been doing this for us for so long and I feel your etchings just keep getting better and better. The ones for that you did this year for the 2024 American Hero Pet of the Year contest of Zeke, Vince, and Daisy, absolutely stunning. And I think it's really inspiring that you feel like you get to know them. And I, I really feel that when we look at your etchings, it just has that personal touch that you you really convey their personalities in such a beautiful way. That's cool. Thank you. They are handmade 100% of the way. So I spend a lot of time with them. So by the time I'm done, I'm like, I feel like I really know them. <laughs> you can definitely tell it shows. So from <laughs> photography to pet etchings with our American Hero Pet of the Year contest, what has been the most rewarding aspect of working with dogs on deployment for you thus far? I think it's just that what we were just discussing about the stories and like hearing about I believe pets are family and I know you guys do too which is awesome and um, keeping you know our pets with their families together because of that bond and because of that it's like that unconditional love and loyalty that they share with us so it's like you want to you know remember them forever and of course stay with them so when um, people are deploying they want to be able to come back to that healing source, you know, their best friend. And so seeing those uh, reunification videos is super fun. Um, I love that. And then also just seeing over the years, um, dogs on deployment, um, being able to grow, you know, there's been some bumpy years, right, through COVID and stuff like that for everybody. Um, but they've hung on and they're still serving and they're keeping pets and their families together, which is so important. So I just love what they do. Absolutely. So 
with that, I'm getting like your pet prints, they're really touching on themes of love, as well as sometimes themes of loss. Mm -hmm. So with that, how, when you have someone that approaches you that wants to go through that pet print process that has unfortunately experienced the loss of that beloved pet, how do you navigate those difficult emotions that come with losing a beloved pet while working through your art? Right. So that's a great question. Um, so yeah, I've had pets ever since I was a little kid. So, you know, like we were just talking about, they don't live as long as we do. So I've had quite a few that have passed. And actually back in 2022, I had two of our three pets pass within two days of each other. And that was oh, after so losing a good friend of mine suddenly the week before. So it was just like, boom, boom, one thing after the other. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And so I wrote a blog post about that because I feel like, you know, a lot of other people are dealing with that too. And I just gave some practical help. So it's so important to take care of yourself during that time. And I was finding even just practical things like making coffee just for the smell of it. I'm not a coffee drinker. My husband <laughs> is, but I would go make his coffee, you know, cause it smelled good. Just like little things like that, um, that I had to, to learn. And then of course, you know, with the pet portrait etchings and actually with the photography, a lot of times I'm doing this because of a loss. Sometimes it's just a gift for somebody, you know, which is fun, but sometimes I'm doing this because they've lost a pet and they want a special memorial. So I like am right there with them because I remember, you know, it's so fresh in my mind. And I think just because of my personality, like, um, you know, I'm able to just assist with that, like with patience and compassion. And then practically speaking, I've written a lot of other blog posts too about, you know, how to prepare to say goodbye or just dealing with pet loss, um, just out of my own experience. And then um, the lessons I've learned from myself and from helping others. That's really beautiful. That Art is such an amazing thing that you can really convey emotions, both for the viewer who is looking at your art, but then also you get to express those emotions while you're working through those pieces. And I think it's beautiful that you've taken it even a step further to incorporate a written aspect of that. So for those who might be experiencing pet loss and are interested in reading some of your experiences and how you worked through that, where can they find those blog articles that you're talking about? That would be on my website at grayboypetportraits.com. Um, they'll see the blog on the top navigation bar. So yeah, it's grayboy with a E, G-R-E-Y-B-O-Y. -E Just like Jake, that was his nickname. <laughs> grayboy Pet Portraits. Awesome. Thank you so much. And they can, of course, flush all that stuff out in greater detail. But for those of that are listening right now, those um, that might be experiencing pet loss, who, what advice would you give to someone who's navigating that experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a good question. Um, number one is take care of yourself, right? Like, I think a lot of times we underestimate, like we, cause I think a lot of times in culture, you know, people rate our losses and they think a person is like a higher than a pet. But sometimes like if your pet got you through the hardest time, and your pet is who you see every day, you might grieve that pet more than um, your own uncle or aunt or grandmother, you know, I don't know, everybody's different, um, but it just really depends. So I think it's validating that loss and realizing how much that really affects you and then taking that time for yourself. So sometimes you might have to take some time off work. You might have to take a break um, and then doing things that, help you like making coffee just for the heck of it <laughs> or um, going for a walk when you normally wouldn't like making um, you know a promise to yourself if you know nature is really healing like I feel like that is um, I'll promise myself you know that I'm going to go out there every single day at some point in the day as often as I can you know so I'll try to do that every day and then take the time to be present so like I'm not on my phone I'm not I'm really like paying attention to what's surrounding me. And I just like give myself a break and um, 
it's just having compassion on yourself, really. And then asking for help. So sometimes you might need to ask for help um, from a friend or sometimes friends or family don't even understand and that's okay. So don't go to those people. Yeah. Um, and then, um, or professional support. So in some of my blog posts, I list some of those resources or you can go to a counselor and make sure, you know, you would ask them and make sure they've had their own pet. So um, I would want to know that they've experienced that as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for walking through that. And I definitely want to flush out even further that it's so important. I know you touched on being like allowing yourself to walk through that. Everyone's experience is so different too. So I just wanted to point out for our listeners that, you know, coffee, making coffee for you for the smell of it, that's, that's something that helps you. And there are so many other things that might be very specific to you. So give your space give yourself that space and that compassion so that you can work through that process in the way that is true to yourself and forgive yourself for the time that it may take. Um, grief is a cycle. It's going to be different for everyone. And if Mandy's tips work for you, that's fantastic and adjust where needed so that you can work through that. Cause it's grief is heavy <laughs> and it's different for everyone, mm -hmm. but I think your tips are a fabulous place to start. Thank you. Thanks. So now that we've kind of talked about your great boy pet prints, I mentioned earlier that you're actually on the board of directors for Dogs on Deployment. I would love to talk a little bit more with you about what your role is and what inspired you to take on this role with Dogs on Deployment. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I had never thought of it, but um, you guys asked me and I was like, <laughs> okay, when you told me why, you know, I was all on board. So um, I'm 100% on board with helping. I mean, I was already helping with the artwork and supporting that way, but um, to be on the board, you know, kicks it up a notch. So I'm able to um, further support. So what does being a board member for Dogs on Deployment mean to you both personally, but then also professionally? Um, it's, I feel like it's another way to use my life lessons to help other, you know, pets and their people and be able to support that way. So um, personally, I mentioned I was a military brat. So um, it's important to me to support our military. And then as a pet lover and a pet artist, you know, to, of course, support pets and the people who love them. So with being on the board of directors for Dogs on Deployment, what do you envision for the future for Dogs on Deployment? Yeah, so I love so much how um, they have the foster network. And I actually have a family me member who in the past had fostered uh, for them. And so I got to see, actually, I did, I took photos that time too. Yes, um, you captured some of I forgot about that <laughs> with that dog and um, had like a, a flag in the grass next to the dog anyway. Um, and so it was cool to see that in action. And um, that was just super cool. Um, and I love seeing how, you know, keeping that foster network growing and then even eventually in the future, maybe having that foster network help out with other circumstances, like maybe with, um, you know, first responders who are needing a place for their pet to go, um, or even for domestic violence victims. Um, it's very hard to leave and find a place that will accept um, your pets as well sometimes. And as we all know and have spoken already about in this time together, is how important it is for us to be able to heal with our pets, right? And to stay together um, and keep that bond going. So I would love it if they, if Dogs on Deployment was able to grow and use that foster network um, to, you know, for those who are interested to be able to support these other um, circumstances. And um, I also am a domestic violence victim advocate. And I feel really strongly that everybody deserves to live in peace and safety. So um, unfortunately, when people, victims have pets, a lot of times that keeps them stuck. So it's important to be able to um, get them to safety and the pet to safety as well. And then eventually, you know, have them be back together um, in a peaceful situation. 
Absolutely. Well, Dogs on Deployment is super excited. There's so many opportunities for our Hero Pet Boarding Network to expand and offer this critical service to even other groups that are in need of reunification and cohesion with staying with the pets that love them because pets are family. And we're so excited at Dogs on Deployment to have you on our board of directors to help us in that journey. And we can't wait to see where the future goes. Thank you. I can't wait too. I'm excited. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mandy. We're super excited to have you on today. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit and speak with me and can't wait to talk to you again and see where Dogs on Deployment is in the future. Sure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Hey there, it's Elisa Johnson, president of Dogs on Deployment. As a veteran and a pet owner, I know firsthand the challenges military members face, especially when it comes to pet ownership during deployment, training, or PCS moves overseas. That's why I created Dogs on Deployment. We are the only free to use nationwide online network of volunteer pet boarders willing to care for military member pets during their service commitments. We have one goal, to prevent unnecessary pet relinquishment by service members due to their service commitments. No military member should have to give up their beloved pet when duty calls. But we have one problem. We need you in order to help us achieve mission success. If you support the troops and love animals, you can sign up to volunteer to board one of our pets in need or make a donation online to support our Hero Pet Boarding Network. Don't wait. Visit dogsondeployment.org to get started. And don't forget to follow us on social media too. And hey, just because we're called Dogs on Deployment doesn't mean we don't help cats too. I've got dogs, cats, and even chickens. And through our network, we've helped every type of pet. So don't wait. Visit dogsondeployment.org today to support your troops and their pets.